okay so uh, we were discussing on asymptotic notations and uh, mathematically how do you basically express it as in terms of function growth uh, the asymptotic upper bound lower bound and all that let us now talk in terms of functions now say already you have uh, algorithms and um, you know you counter the statements you come up with these uh, stay you know equation order of how is the growth of the algorithm right so suppose say you want to understand our notations uh, i will share you this uh, uh, you know examples uh, solutions manual you could uh, look at in your model but uh, just we will try to solve one of the problem for each case here now say uh, for the function that you have right uh, say f of n you would like to define in the given uh, problem say f of n and there's a mistake here now f of n is equal to say 2n squared plus 3n plus 1 right uh, the question asked here is can you show that the growth rate of growth of algorithm f of n is equal to o of n square right uh, so how do you represent that if you want to show that f of n is equal to o of n square mathematically you have to say that uh, you know f of n is greater than or equal to uh, what is it right 0 r and it's of the same r be uh, at least lower than that of so which means less than or equal to c times g of n which means i should always have this inequality check you know satisfied for all n greater than or equal to n naught so what is that n naught and for the positive constant c is something where you can achieve this inequality is what you have to prove right so if you say that then you could say that f of n is of asymptotically of the same order of growth um, or lower than that of the g of n so i will show for the first case i think for the next uh, remaining cases you can try out or you can refer that uh, manual where you could uh, find out the solutions for the other cases so looking into this problem if you want to show that f of n is equal to o square we have to show that firstly f of n is greater than 0 and less than or equal to c times c of n for all n greater than n naught so what is that now we have to show that 2 n square plus 3 n plus 1 is less than or equal to c times n square when can this inequality hold good this could be satisfied so you will have to start substituting values for what values of n right you will have this equation satisfied the next question is for what values of c right so it's not just one case that you can have it's not that the values of the c and n naught is uh, going to be unique you can have cases coming in right so depending upon the value of the c the value of n naught can also change but you have to show that for any value of c and n naught right this inequality is going to hold good and you could show that you know this uh, is satisfies right so that uh, equation could be satisfied this particular equation would be satisfied so if you do trial and error right let's say we start with the n equal to 1 right if you put n equal to 1 right if you substitute n equal to 1 here it's going to be you know 6 less than c times 1 square which is 1 so for c value of 6 and n greater than or equal to 1 right you know that you always know that you know uh, this inequality case will it work or will it not work which means for n equal to 1 will this work right if you have c as 6 right and n is equal to 1 this inequality case will work it will be exactly equal to that correct so for all n greater than or equal to 1 and c equal to 6 could be one case to start with now well, we have found that right if you go on trialing error more right you want to reduce the constant value right suppose you take c value of 3 in that scenario your n should be greater than or equal to 3 right for that case you have this particular case happening so which means that uh, for all n greater than or equal to n naught for that particular value of c your inequality case holds good so this you go on to show that f of n is basically equal to o of n square okay now let's look at another way to uh, understand the other notation which means you want to show a uh, big O notation right and you have two functions right so the question asked here is uh, the function say is defined by 2n cube plus 3n square plus 1 and g of n is 2n square plus 3 right you're being asked to show that f of n is equal to big omega of g of n 
now we're talking about the maximum minimum states that coming in right so can we now relate f of n equal to omega of g of n right the order of the growth is same or at least greater than that of g of n so what should be the condition that we have to prove now suppose i'm taking this problem say now it should be where f of n is less than or equal you know greater than or equal to zero and uh, what it should be is it should be greater than or equal to c times t of n right for all n greater than or equal to n not and c greater than zero that's the case that you will have to prove this inequality which basically means if you look at this uh, so if you have to show f of n is equal to omega of g of n you have to prove that 2n cube plus 3n square plus 1 is greater than or equal to c times 2n square plus 3 right so clearly this equation one is satisfied if you go on to substitute say if n equal to one value and find out what's the value of c and see if it holds good otherwise you will have to keep finding out and this holds good if c is equal to one for all n greater than or equal to one it is obvious that you know this uh, growth is obviously going to be greater than that of this particular g of n so we could go on to express this so like this you could try out even for the theta uh, notation where you need to find c1 and c2 for you know uh, the case where you want to express this as theta of uh, the functions that you have with g of n so when you could, you could go on to say that's a tight bound and all that so these are the way mathematically you go on to represent right that you could show that this particular function is of this order of growth whether it could be represented o or omega or theta right but this is just the mathematical way of analyzing the order of growth of functions and trying to asymptotically say whether it could be an upper bound or lower bound but what are we interested here is to come up designing algorithms right and going on to evaluate by counting the statements and saying what is going to be the minimum number of steps or maximum number of steps or the average number of steps that it takes depending upon what is the higher order term that is dominating and go on to um, you know neglect the lower order terms and the constants that is there so that you could say that the time complexity of the algorithm in terms of whole notation is say n square right which means the upper bound that you go on to say time complexity of the algorithm that is a minimum number of steps in terms of the omega big omega notation could be linear so i go on to represent as uh, big omega of n right on an average i could go on to say that it is still n square right so this is the way that we are really going to work on and so that's going to be the focus for the next set of lectures where we're going to look at one design techniques which is called the design divide and conquer and see uh, try solving problems using that approach and go on to see how do you calculate the time complexity if you go on to solve with that approach so let's focus on that now i'm going to share you um, this uh, you know slide and the corresponding you know problems later that you could try out so you please check your moodle so that you can work out on these problems okay thank you